Hello everyone, in this video I am going to analyze this B using moment distribution method. Uh, and this beam, the ABC, it is under load UDL of 5 kN per meter and in the span AB we have another point load of 20 kN. Also the B support sinks at 0, sinks 0 0.015 meter. Okay, so this uh, uh, example we have solved as in previous video using slope deflection method here I am going to use movement distribution method so first step is you have to calculate distribution factor so distribution factor implies but for example if you see here at B, there are two members B A B C. So any load, if you are applying, it will be distributed to the two members B A and B C depending on their distribution factor, which is equal to the stiffness of the member divided by total stiffness. Okay. So here for B A, it will be four E I by L where L is the span of BA which is 5 meter so this is 3 meter I'll write 5 meter divide by so total stiffness for BA is 4 EI by L plus BC is 3 EI by L here length is 3 meter so this gives us 4 by 9 Similarly, for BC, this is equal to 3 EI by L by the total stiffness, 4 EI by L plus 3 EI by L. This gives 5 by 9. So, when you add it, it should come 1. So, for this, it is like if you have a fixed end okay you are applying a load and you are having a fixed end so the stiffness will be 4 EI by L okay so this is for fixed or internal support and if you are applying a force and the other end is hinge then it will be 3 EI by L So if you see here, A support is fixed and C support is having roller support. That's why I have used 4 EI by L for the BA, sub, BA span and for BC I have used 3 EI by L formula. Okay, This is for hinged or pinned. So we will make a table for all the spans I will write here in a tabulated form. So we have AB, then we have BA, we have BC and CB. Okay. So for this at B because here two members are joining we have calculated the distribution factor as 4 by 9 and 5 by 9 now step 2 is calculating the fixed end moment so first is due to the external or the applied load so I am going to calculate the fixed end moment due to external load so 
so this uh, is same as what we have calculated in slope deflection method because fixed end moment uh, depends on the external load here at a in a b we have two loads one is udl of 5 kilo newton per meter and point load of 20 kilo newton so for 20 kilo newton w a b square by l square then we have udl w l square by 12 span is 5 meter so we got 20.02 kilo newton meter so fixed end moment for ba it will be plus 20 into a will be 2 okay then fix, fixed end moment for bc fixed end moment means we are assuming that both the ends of the span are fixed and what will be the moment due to the external load okay this is what we are assuming because uh, of that even if you see here it is uh, roller support is there still we will assume this as fixed and what are the moment coming so w here only udl is there span is 3 wl square by 12 minus 3.75 kilo newton meter fixed end moment for cb is plus wl square by 12 okay so this i will write down in the table minus 20.02 plus 24.82 minus 3.75 plus 3.75 okay now next we are going to calculate fixed end moment due to this settlement because there is another uh, here point is the support b sinks 15 millimeter so for that what is the fixed end moment coming that we are going to add here so step 3 so this we are going to skip if it does not sink so fixed end moment due to sinking support so if it is fixed end and there is a sinking or deformation or settlement we said deflection so the moments coming is 6 e i delta l square okay so for us it will be minus 6 e i is here in the question e i is given 7000 okay we are taking so for more details how e i is calculated is there in the previous video in which we have analyzed using slope deflection method and deflection delta is the sinking value which is 0 0.015 meter by l square 5 square okay for a b minus 25.2 now if there is like one end is hinged and this is fixed or internal support and there is a deflection or settlement delta so here the fixed end moment is 0 and here it is minus 3 ei by 3 ei delta by l square so I'm going to write down the fixed end moment due to the sinking support minus 25.2 for a b and b a okay because here so this is fixed end this internal is we have assumed as fixed right fixed fixed internal support or fixed end so minus 3 i by delta l square and if you look at hinge here it is 0 and here minus 3 i for us in our case how the span is so fixed here internal support and then this is hinged so for us here it is zero okay because this span is like 
here we are having C and this is B. Okay, this is C, B and A. And here we will have plus 3EI delta L square, opposite direction, okay. So I will add here plus value, plus 35, this is 0, okay. So this value I have put in the table. Now, after this, so let me add it. So this value comes minus 45.22. This is minus 0 0.38. This is 31.25. This is 3.75. Okay. I'll extend these lines. Okay. Now, we have seen here that here the C moment at C will be equal to 0 because this is not fixed, right? This is not a fixed end. This is a ruler support. So I'm going to put in order to make this moment at C, which is CB, I will write equal to 0. I'm going to here add minus 3.75 so that it becomes 0. Okay. So when I'm adding minus 3.75, half will be transferred to the CB. So half of minus 3.75 is minus 1.875. So here half gets transferred. Now here I'm going to add the total moment at joint B. So minus 3.8 plus 31.25 minus 1.875. Okay. So I'm going to add this 3. And then so let me add this minus zero point three eight plus thirty one point two five minus 1.875 so I'm getting 28.995 value okay when I'm at all this I'm getting 20 28.995 so this is the unbalanced value okay we should get this as zero so in order to get this so that means the equilibrium the moment moment equilibrium at joint should be like moment at B summation of moment at B should be equal to zero that means moment at BA plus BC should be equal to zero so as this value is coming 28.995 how it will be distributed to BA and BC as per the distribution factor so I'm going to multiply this with 4 by 9 which gives me Twelve point eight nine. So this gives me twelve point eight nine value. So this is positive value. I am going to put negative to balance it. Okay. Similarly, when I am going to multiply this with five by nine, so this I am getting sixteen point one one. I am going to put negative value in order to balance it. Now, if you add this total, you will get all this value you will get as moment at B is equal to 0 total moment so so we have got equilibrium there finally I am going to add all this so this is 0 here also because I added minus 12.89 here half will be transferred to this so minus 6.445 okay but because the other support is the roller support it will not transfer half there it will be zero okay transfer to here zero so i'm going to add minus 45.22 minus 60 6.445 so i'm getting the value minus 51.665 
So when I'm going to add minus 0 0.38 and minus 12.89, the value is minus 13.27. Similarly, 31.25 minus 1.875 minus 16.11, I'm getting 13.27. Two seven. So this is what I am getting the moment at the joints. Okay. So these are the moments. So we can superpose this with the simply supported moment to get the bending moment diagram. So further you can refer for the slope deflection method we have done the same how to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram so right now what we found is if a b c are the supports and you have to calculate the simply supported bending moment diagram in this we are going to superpose the moment that we have calculated from slope deflection method. So first value is 51.665 then we got here 13.27 and this is 0. So you may get a UDL or something like this. So this is the moment bending moment diagram. So this is how we analyze the beam using moment distribution method. So for further information about the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram, you can refer the previous video in which we have analyzed using slope deflection method. So because um, if you refer this, the values that we have calculated in moment distribution method, the results is similar to the slope deflection method. So after this, you are, it, the steps are similar how we can calculate the CFOs and bending moment diagram. So thank you for watching.